Hey Star Trek readers, welcome to another episode of the Treklet Report. It's been a while since I've done one of these, but let's get right to it. This week I'm talking about Dayton Ward's novel from earlier this year, Star Trek The Next Generation, Hearts and Minds. If you're like me and an avid follower of the Star Trek novels from Pocket Books, you're probably aware of Dayton Ward's TOS novel, From History's Shadow, published in 2013. This book was one of my favorites from the past few years of Treklet. Taking place mostly in the 20th century, the novel followed various secret groups that investigated UFOs and alien encounters on Earth in the 20th century. We know from Star Trek history that these encounters were fairly frequent, and also they investigated a number of temporal incursions by Starfleet officers, many of which you will of course be familiar with. Beginning with the crash of a Ferengi ship near Roswell, New Mexico in 1947, as seen in the Deep Space Nine episode Little Green Men, what follows is a story akin to the X-Files featuring secret government organizations and cover-ups. From History's Shadow is followed up by another TOS novel, Elusive Salvation, in 2016, also by Dayton Ward. Once again, we learn more about the shadowy organizations of Earth's 20th century and their run-ins with extraterrestrials and temporally displaced Starfleet officers. Also active during this time are Gary Seven and Roberta Lincoln, agents of the Aegis, first seen in the TOS episode Assignment Earth, as well as a Vulcan named Mistral who was left behind on Earth in the Enterprise episode Carbon Creek. Mistral's story, as well as the stories of agents belonging to the Aegis, are continued in this novel, Hearts and Minds. In this novel, the Earth organization Majestic 12 has continued into the 21st century, where they protect Earth from what they believe to be extraterrestrial threats. An apparent existential threat to Earth is discovered in the form of the Aizand, aliens who have been discovered on Earth seeking a new homeworld. The organization launches a desperate plan to defend Earth in their mind in the only way possible. Meanwhile, in the 24th century, the Enterprise E under Captain Jean-Luc Picard is continuing its exploration of the Odyssean Pass, an area of space beyond the borders of the Federation. The mission takes a strange turn when they encounter a planet that the Federation seemingly wishes to keep under wraps, even from Picard and his crew. Admiral Akar, the Starfleet Commander-in-Chief, elects to keep certain information from Picard, instead compartmentalizing it with Torek, who is a crew member on the Enterprise who we have seen in the past in The Next Generation in the episode Lower Decks. In a previous novel, Armageddon's Arrow, he became privy to some sensitive information from the future. He is sworn to secrecy regarding that information, and it is using this clearance that Admiral Akaar entrusts Torek with this new information about the planet, which of course turns out to be the homeworld of the aforementioned Izand. Picard, understandably, is incensed by this decision, and he cannot understand why the Admiral would want to keep information vital to the success of his mission from Picard. It's at this point that I want to jump into the spoilers for this book, so let me stop here first by saying that I really did enjoy this novel. It was an excellent continuation of the story and a really great way to use the TNG crew to continue the story of Majestic 12, as well as a lot of the goings-on in 20th and 21st century Earth. There are some really interesting canon connections in this book, which I will get into in the spoilery side of it, so if you want to hear about those, stick around. But if you'd rather read the book before continuing, please stop here, do so. But if you don't care about spoilers, feel free to continue on ahead. The big dark secret about the Izand is the fact that the organization Majestic 12 used the captured Izand spaceship to launch a mission against the Izand homeworld in the 21st century. Picard is captured and held responsible for the destruction that was supposedly wrought upon the Izand by the Earth ship, and the Enterprise E crew must rescue Picard and at the same time find a way to possibly prove humanity's innocence. And it turns out that humanity is indeed innocent. Sort of. While it is true that Majestic 12 did launch the mission, the intent was to bomb the Aizan homeworld with nuclear weapons from outer space. What actually happened was when the crew got there, they found that they could not complete the mission. Their humanity, I suppose you could say, took over. Although I sometimes have a hard time using the phrase humanity or where's your humanity or that's inhuman because humans are indeed capable of huge amounts of destruction and barbaric acts. So, And in this case, the barbaric acts were to be perpetrated by Majestic 12, but of course the crew is unable to carry them out. 
However, even though they elect not to bomb the Aizand homeworld, certain factions on the homeworld decide to use this crisis as a sort of false flag incident to launch attacks themselves, which of course leads to uh, chain reaction bombardments by various states. And that true history has been covered up in the intervening centuries to point the blame at Earth. The story becomes an interesting allegory about fake news and misinterpreted history. Of course, we know that history is written by the victors, and this book is a very clear allegory about that. Another thing I really enjoyed about this novel was the inclusion of Rain Robinson, a character from the two-part Voyager episode Future's End. I really loved this character, and it was really interesting to see how her story carried forward. Unfortunately, she has ended up having a bit of a tragic life. She ended up losing a family member in the September 11th attacks in New York City. And when she learns that the Aegis saved someone from those attacks, but not her father, she grew very disillusioned about, uh, about the Aegis and their mission on Earth. And her story here, where she comes back into the mission and trying to stop Majestic 12, is really interesting. I really liked that part of the story. There are also some very interesting canon connections with regards to this story. For example, the mission to bomb the Aizand homeworld arrives there within a week of first contact back on Earth. So while this amazing stepping stone in humanity's evolution is happening back on Earth, another aspect of that world and its people are about to bomb another civilization. It's a really interesting parallel between the two things that are happening, and I think it's really interesting that the author has put these two together like that. Also, this novel has a connection to David Mack's previous novel, Section 31 Control. In that novel, of course, all of Section 31's secrets come to light, including Captain Picard's involvement in the Tezwa affair, as shown in the A Time To series of novels. Now, at the start of this episode, of course, Picard gets into a very heated debate with Admiral Akaar about the compartmentalizing of the information with regards to this mission, and Picard feels that he has a little bit of leverage in Starfleet because of his reputation and long service. However, his reputation has been tarnished greatly because of the revelation of his involvement in the Tezwa affair. And the end of the novel is really interesting because Admiral Akaar kind of turns it around on Picard and says, you're not really Starfleet's darling at the moment, and you might be facing some difficult times ahead. So it's a really interesting change in Jean-Luc's circumstances going forward. All in all, like I said, Hearts and Minds is a really interesting novel. It's a lot of fun. I really like the post-nemesis continuity and the new crew members that are on the Enterprise, although I guess perhaps new crew members might be a bit of a misnomer at this point. They've been around for quite a few years, but Dayton Ward is able to craft a really interesting story here. I really hope that when Pocketbook starts the Star Trek novel line back up again, that Dayton Ward is given the reins to handle the TNG crew because I really like the through line he's created here with Armageddon's Arrow, Headlong Flight, and then now in Hearts and Minds. Definitely a strong story and a continuation of a really fun storyline that I really enjoyed starting with From History's Shadow, Through Elusive Salvation, and Hearts and Minds. I'd have to give this one, I'd say four out of five stars. A really interesting book and a great addition to the Star Trek Pocketbooks line. Bruce Gibson and I had the chance to speak with the author of Hearts and Minds, Dayton Ward, on a recent episode of Literary Treks, Trek FM Star Trek Books and Comics podcast. It seems like David Mack writes the bombshell stories, Destiny, Control, for example, that all the other writers must then work with. My question for Dayton is, does he want to hug him or choke him? Yes. <laughs> 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 Yeah, we we like to call him. You know, he 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 has several nicknames, <laughs> some of which are not not uh, s we can't say them on a show that has a PG rating. <laughs> um, but I mean, you know, he's the he's the angel of death. He's he's got that re reputation for killing everything. Well, you know, we I I basically just call him. You know, he's he's like the game record. You know, it's like okay, we've got this board, we've got all the pieces, the game is in play, and then Dave comes in and swipes the board and cleans off all the pieces, and we have to start all over again. Uh, but it's job security because we spend several books <laughs> over many months, if not longer, creating stories in the aftermath of what he's left behind. You know? So check that out. You can get it on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts, including here on YouTube. I'll have a link to that in the description below as well.
So how about you guys? Have you gotten a chance to read Hearts and Minds? And if so, what did you think? Have I convinced you to pick it up and give it a try? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more book reviews and more reviews of Discovery episodes when they come back in January, as well as a lot of other interesting stuff coming up on this channel. Live long and prosper, and I'll see you in the next video.